the uh, contraption I set up to uh, test this BioStar board. I don't know if you can see it. The freaking heatsink actually extends past the edge of the motherboard, so when I was laying it down the other way, it was rocking it. I mean, literally, I'm, I'm not trying to rock it right now because I don't want to screw up brush temps, but it can rock, so to be careful of that. I mean, this thing is like very flat, so whatever. I dealt with it as the best possible. Let me shut this off for a second. I need this. We've been running prime for a while. So, uh, that's it. Almost. 12 hours, 11 hours. So. None of these are pretty accurate, except for maybe the CPU temps. I've been waiting for the damn thing to go back up to a peak temp, but it won't. So I don't know if my thermal paste seated or what. One thing to note is this board needs less voltage to uh, get. 3.9. I don't know if it's a GISA related, so could skew our results a little bit. Not sure. So. It is running at 3200. It does pass at 3200. It took baby steps to get it here on this particular chip. This chip is kind of flaky. Let's get on to the uh, temps and shit. Excuse my language. Try that out. Alright. So I'll put the light on. First, I'm taking ambient. So. Shooting at the floor. Fahrenheit. It's my ambient at the floor. Well, on a motherboard box. And the camera's gonna fuck up. Anyway. I gotta sit back here so I can make sure you guys can see this. I have seen over 60 right now it's only running at 61.8 on the CPU it's had a peak of up to 73 so the chokes run warmer on this board than the FETs you'll probably get 56 on this meter I focus on the chokes this side runs considerably cooler and it's not surprising because it's half the v-core phase so four right here this is basically your v-core phase your v-core phase is here to here and then the four on this side are soc so the soc and the four for the cpu it's taxing that little heat sink and since they chose to run lights, it, it, it runs warmer. Uh, no heat pipe, there we go, there was a 56. That is like right on the chokes with the infrared. If I go up higher, this is actually, even though it's shooting at the wall, this is probably the infrared that's on the vets. There's a 56. We're only at 62 on the CPU. We've peaked at 73, so you can imagine that it gets hotter. Anyway, that's the temps. Sorry for the glare over here, but I need the light so I can see what I'm doing. So... CPU switching frequency. Uh, 
SOC switching frequency. This should be... Where are we here? This should be CPU switching frequency still. CPU switching frequency. CPU switching frequency. CPU switching frequency. And as soon as you hit here, this is the SOC. So the uh, V core readings are pretty scattered from socket to caps. This would be SOC. That's over what hardware monitor is saying. And this would be V-Core. And that's over what hardware monitor is saying. And over Y socket by quite a bit. So, that covers the socket at the, uh, in the caps. This right here, you can measure VDDP right at this unit right here and then this little tiny thing over here this is your can't even see it I've actually there's a picture online I circled it this is your PLL for the most part this is like CPU this is like SOC up here and you've got memory over here so I'm not even going to switch this thing back and forth because uh it's just easier for me not to switch this thing back and forth. Shows negative, just add a positive to it. I'm tired of switching ends. That should be dim. That's your PLL. This is your VDDP. Ah. Not only really good. Stay on there. VDDP. This would be V core. And this would be SOC up here. Oh, no, it's VDDP. I'll just test this one. This would be your SOC. So, those are all your voltages on your board. Um, like I said, I have seen it go over 60. That kind of slams this board. Somewhere in between the Tai Chi and the MSI with no cooling on it and uh, I'm gonna have to go back and flash this BIOS to something else because I'm going to show you one of the problems I ran into with it and you, if you play with something in there you're most likely to run into it too so might be useful to know. So let me clean up all this stuff and move it out of my way, shut everything off, and we'll move you guys into a better position so you can see. Now, oh. as usual, we will use a MSI box because that's what it's good for. enough and I can see what I'm doing 
Uh, no. Anyway, so stop this. So this thing is, this is really awesome. I'm going to come up with a new nickname for this board, and I'm not going to say it on camera, but if the, the new BIOS doesn't fix it, I have a nickname for this board. It's not nice. Other than, I mean, this is just a, it's a really stupid problem to have. Really, really stupid problem to have. And I could see how, in, in one sense, it can be dangerous of, of a problem to have. By the way, if you watch the, I don't know if you could see the reflection in there. Actually, where are the port 80s? I can't even see them, so whatever. They're buried because of the way I have to run the board because the heat sink sticks out. So, this is what we want to notice right here. We measured it, so that's pretty accurate. It's close enough for what we're doing right now. So, this is like just, this is awesome. So you go in here and say, oh, well, you know what? I think I have a little droop. Let me use load line level one. See what that does. Because it doesn't tell you what's forward and what's backward. Oh, now our voltage drop a lot. Oh, okay. So level one must be the lowest. Level six must be the highest. Let's go to level six. Yay! It's doing its stupid restart stuff because of a uh, PC3200. When it does this, this is awesome because it pretty much resets your entire BIOS. That's its idea of a overclock, failed overclock recovery. Just let's just reset the whole BIOS. This board required baby steps to get the memory to 3200, so. When you play around with too many settings, once you've dialed everything in, it'll reboot fine, but if you start playing with stuff again, yeah, it's not gonna reboot fine. All right, so it probably just killed all my overclocking settings. And it did, see, all my settings are gone. Voltages, anything, everything. So anyway, let's do this again. So we'll just set 1.4, just for an example.
is popping again. All right, back in BIOS. So we've got 1.271. Well, what the hell happened? All right, I'll just fix that with blowbind calibration. Maybe it's much lower. Well, that didn't do anything. It's not even changing. What the hell? Oh, okay. So maybe, you know, the uh, power saving features on the CPU kicked in. So we'll kill C state control and we'll kill CBS. That'll fix it. didn't do anything it's back to one two seven one so now what so instead of taking your board and using it for a frisbee at this point what you need to do is you need to clear your CMOS and then what you need to do is not touch load line calibration leave it at auto don't touch it it'll screw up your voltage and it's possible I'm not saying it it's happened to me because it hasn't but it's possible you try and compensate with it and then eventually at one point sometime it's going to decide that hey i want to work meanwhile you've compensated and brought the voltage up to like 1.5 to counter this and then all of a sudden it shoots 1.6 into your cpu and you lose your cpu so yeah just clear the cmos start over don't touch load line calibration at all don't play with it leave it alone and your v-core will work as soon as you touch it it breaks the v-core on this board it does not work and you want to throw it out the window like a frisbee until you figure out what the deal is i'm going to try the latest bios instead of this beta and hopefully it's not there but i have a feeling i just have a funny feeling that that problem is still there so that's the biostar board um let me flash this BIOS and see if I can find out anything more about the board. Uh, I tried 107B clock. I had cruddy RAM on it and at the time. So once I get the other BIOS in, if it has B clock still, I will try it again. Hope it was helpful. Um, see you next time.